Good morning. Today we're looking at business calculus with, with Excel, Chapter 1, Functions, Graphs in Excel, Section 1.1, Linear Functions and Models. Through this text, we'll be using some business conventions. In microeconomics, we'll often use Q and P rather than X and Y, and we will consider Q as the input and P as the output. This is to get you used to changing what variables you use and using the ones according to conventions. Typically, Q stands for quantity and P stands for price. Linear functions show up in many places. Most nice functions, if you zoom in far enough, they look like a line, so linear functions are a good place to start looking at functions. For all lines that aren't vertical, we have a slope. The slope is defined as the rise over the run. and there are three sets of data that easily define a line. A unique line is given by the slope and the intercept, where it intercepts the x origin, or by the slope and any point on the line, or by a pair of points. Any of these will give you a unique line. From the three sets of data, we have the slope-intercept form, the point-slope form, and the two-point form. There's also a general form that's used for vertical lines. Students often ask about the best form to use. The honest answer is the best form depends on what information you're given and what question you're asked. I think the best form is the one that answers the question you've been asked with the information you've been given and requires the least amount of work. We're also going to look a bit at piecewise linear functions Overtime pay will be the favorite example for piecewise function. Let's move towards a more blackboardish setting. So if I'm looking at my setting, I said I'll use Q and P. And if I had a line, I could define it by where it intercepts, intersects and the slope. Or I could do any two points or I can do the slope and any one point. Any of these will give me a line. So I'm going to start with P equals four times Q plus 10. This is in slope intercept form. And there's a unique form for each line. If I'm looking at it and I want to convert to another form, the easiest way is to note that the point 0, 10 is on the line. Zero ten 10 with Q equal to 0, that's the intercept, and so That's 10 on our position. And so if I want to just easily make it point slope form, I'm going to say that P equals 4 times Q minus 0 plus 10. That looks remarkably like the slope intercept form because the point we've chosen for the point slope form happens to be the intercept. But if I'm looking at my initial equation, 1, 14, and 2, 18 are also on the line. So P equals 4 times Q minus 1 plus 14, and P equals 4 times Q minus 2 plus 18 are also point slope. So when I'm talking about point slope, the advantage is I have to do less work given a slope of 4 and a point. I simply write down point slope form. The disadvantage is I have three different equations that are all the same line, and when I was doing slope-intercept form, there was only one equation for a given line. If I want to look at the two-point form, I 
I'm going to notice that the slope is the rise over the run in this case that would be 18 minus 14 over 2 minus 1 which we said was 4. The two-point formula simply uses that expression for slope so I would get P times or P equals 18 minus 14 over 2 minus 1 times Q minus 1 plus 14 and that gives me the two-point form. The last form, the general form, comes about because there are lines that don't have a slope. That if I go back to my original picture, if I take a vertical line, there is no slope there because when I try and do rise over run, the run is zero. And so I'd like a format that doesn't distinguish between P and Q, and I'm going to do that by simply bringing everything to the same side. General form, I change P equals 4Q plus 10 to 0 equals minus P plus 4Q plus 10. I simply have moved everything to the same side so that if I wanted to do something with no slope, that would be saying P is not in the equation because P would only work with a given slope, and for any P I'm going to have the same Q. If I want to change back, the easiest way to change back is towards the two-point form, and I'm going to do that um, to go back. I first want to point with 0 equal P, and so I'll get 0 equals 0 plus 4Q plus 10, so 0 minus 2.5 is a point, and then I look at set Q equal to zero, and I have zero equals minus P plus 10, and so 10 comma zero is a point. And now I have two points for the point slope, for the two point formula or I can work out a slope and do slope, point slope or slope intercept. But this gave me my two intercepts. Looking at piecewise linear, the favorite example is overtime pay. I am paid ten dollars an hour up to forty hours per week then fifteen dollars an hour overtime so if I look at that and want an equation for that I'm going to first think about what it looks like 
my pay starts linear up until I get to 40, and then it becomes steeper. Well, this is at 400, $10 an hour at $40 an hour. And so if I'm looking for my equation, my equation for this is going to be pay in terms of hours. Well, it's 10 times hours if hours is less than or equal to 40, and it's 400 for the first 40 hours plus 15 times hours minus 40 when hours is greater than 40. And so this is a piecewise linear function. We need to think about it when we're doing linear functions as well, because in the real world, most functions don't go on forever but they change slope at various points. That's all for right now. I will see you tomorrow when we look at the next section. Thank you.